Happy Monday morning endeavour. I hope you have had a great weekend. Managed to get out, enjoy a little bit of the sunshine that we've had and dodged a few showers as well. Now we're starting this Monday morning with our chapter called Con. We left it on Friday when Fred and Con had scaled the heights of the canopy of the rainforest, linked to our geography last week, um, and found a map. We don't know what X marks the spot means yet, but I'm sure we will be finding out this week. You'll see on your timetable as well for this week that I've plotted out every chapter that will be on YouTube every morning ready for you to start the day. Okay, so our chapter today is called Con. The next day was Wednesday. Wednesday at school began with double geography. The most exciting thing that happened on Wednesday was biology with old Mr Martin, who was liable to break wind at unexpected intervals. This Wednesday, Fred woke it to the a rainforest thunderstorm and rain dripping through the roof of the den into his ear. Lila and Con were already awake, poring over the map, their heads almost touching. Max was snoring in a rain puddle, mud in his fringe and eyebrows. Bacchus fur was soaked and slipped against his bones. He looked as furious as it is possible for a sloth to look. Lila laid her thumb on the X on the map. It's got to be much closer than Manius, she said as she turned and saw Fred was awake. Fred, do you think the raft could get us there? He moved to look, feeling his muscles creak under his skin. Both girls were shivering. It wasn't cold, but the damp of the day had got into their skin. We'd have to get through all those weeds here, he said. And there's that sign there. That thing looks like a snake. Exactly. He looked out towards the river and the filing cabinet grey sky. But yeah, I think we could. But you don't think we should? asked Con. It was very clearly a question that begged the answer, no. We saw from the tree it was miles. We can't stay here forever, said Fred. He'd never wanted anything so much as he wanted to launch the raft down the river to find the X. He needed to know what it was to be an explorer. There was another kind of hunger in his gut that had nothing to do with food. It was terror and possibility fused together with hope. You've got to be joking. Con looked from Lila to Fred. We do have a map, said Lila softly. We would actually know where we were going this time. But you don't know what's at the end of it. Con's skin was white and red in patches. But it's got to be something or there won't be the map, said Fred. But what if the X is supposed to mean never go here? Because things that will come for you in the this, there are things that will come for you in the dark. But if the other option is to stay here, I thought you'd want to leave," said Fred. "I don't want to leave. I hate. I do want to leave. I hate it here," she spat. "I hate the mosquitoes and the ants and the bites and the endless, endless hunger all the time. But I don't want to follow a map to nowhere. I want to go home." Max jerked awake and began to whine, tugging at Lila's sleeve. She shook him off. I want to go home too, said Lila. Her eyebrows were tight, angry across her forehead. But it's no worse for you than for anyone else. Yes, it is. Con's face was contorted beyond recognition. You don't understand. It's easier for you because you're used to it. You're from here. Lila's eyes widened. I live in a city. Her voice was thin with shock. We have a dining room with silver candlesticks. I do not live in the jungle. But you're not feeling sick all the time. Con's jaw was clenched. I wake up every morning feeling like I'm going to vomit. She thumped the wet ground and flecks of mud sprang up around her fist. But so do I. I want. I hate it so much here I can't breathe. Do you think any of us like it? But you're not alone, Con burst out. You've got Max. Exactly. Exactly, and he cries all the time. And if he dies, it's all my fault. Max heard and let out a roar. Sobs shook his whole body. Fred caught his wrist and held it to stop him from running. At least you know if you die, there'll be someone there who's bothered to care. Con yelled over the noise. It's not my fault no one cares about you, spat Lila. You don't know. Stop it, shouted Max. He ran at the two girls and kicked out at them both, his shoes smacking mud against their skin. Stop it right now! Lila's mouth shut with a snap. She turned to her brother and allowed him to climb up her arms. She rubbed his back, her eyes utterly exhausted. Don't cry, it just makes it worse. A tear was running down Con's cheek. Fred pulled a leaf from the wall of the shelter and handed it to her. She mopped her face with it. It didn't do much good. 
I'm just so tired, she said, and I'm hungry and I ache. Lila looked down at her hands. I didn't mean it, what I just said. There was silence. The rain thumped against the leaves over their head. I have nightmares about my mama, said Lila. I dream that she's looking for me and I'm caught in a tree and I can't shout and I can't make her look up and see me. She hesitated. Do you dream about your parents? Fred dreamt of nothing else. His father just out of earshot, just out of reach, while he struggled in the dark to touch him with his fingertips. He half nodded carefully, non-committal. Com's mouth shaped a word, then fell still. It's not like that for me, she said at last. I live with my great aunt. What happened to your parents, asked Lila. They're dead. Com's mouth hardened again and she set her jaw as if daring them to sympathise. My mother died when I was three and my father was killed in, a, in the war. And then a family fostered me. But you just said, they had a baby of their own and they threw me out. So I was sent to live with my great aunt. Con gave a carefully nonchalant shrug. She didn't really want me, but there were no other options. They kicked you out. They said I bullied the baby, but I didn't. But once, once it was crying and it wouldn't stop, so I gave it a slap. Oh, said Lila, her face was stricken. And I don't know. She paused, swallowed, bit off a slither of her thumbnail and went on. They said I shouted things at the baby. It was only once, truly, and it didn't understand. So why would it matter? Fred nodded. My great aunt, she sends me to spend summers with the nuns. Nuns? A convent school. That's why I'm in Brazil. The year before that I was in India. She says the travel will improve my character, but I hate it. Do you want to be improved? Lila seemed to be trying not to sound too sceptical. Con tried to smile. Not really, but she likes the girl girls to be quiet and proper. She says I'm rude. I don't mean to be. But then, when I try to be good, what I think is good, she doesn't notice. Or maybe she doesn't care. So mostly I just, I don't know, I don't bother. She wiped her nose with a finger and thumb. And I don't think, I don't think she'll have sent people to look for me. There isn't much money. The convent school paid for my boat fare here. They have a fund for war orphans. She grimaced a deep, bitter wince away from her own words. Charity case. So when he said, I lied. Your aunt sounds absolutely awful, said Lila. Really, she does, Fred said. He wondered if he should punch Con on the arm the way the other boys did at school. He decided it might not be a punching occasion. She's just old, really. Con breathed in a deep, shuddering breath, as if she'd expelled something weighty. She scrubbed her at her eyes with a handful of her hair. I never told anyone about my foster family. Please don't tell anyone. Who would we tell, said Fred, looking at the green wall of jungle around him. Lila unhooked back his claw from her neck and settled him on Con's shoulder. Here, he might try to eat your ears, but he means it in a nice way. A tear ran down Con's cheek. Back had licked it away. Fred looked at Con. Fred had never hugged anybody. His father didn't believe in hugging. He said it was presumptuous and unhygienic. But Con looked so suddenly bony and defeated. He made a fist and pushed it softly against Con's shoulder, rocking her sideways. Con waited longer than Fred had expected before. She tensed up with a half laugh and shook him off. OK, she said. Her breath was shaky. Fine, you win, we'll follow the map. Fred felt something fierce and hot ignite in his stomach. If we gather grubs and berries today, he said, we could be ready by tomorrow. Lila looked at Con's tense face. Tomorrow, she said. Con hunched her shoulders and bent her head. It was almost a nod.